Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the Skymaster XXL Hawk. This is a beautiful plane, if you didn't know that already. It's going together awesome. We're making great progress on this thing and uh, we're back with another, uh, another video. I think this might be video number three in the build, uh, getting a little bit uh, lost in all the numbers. So anyways, guys, let's continue on. Hang tight and we'll get back into this aircraft. All right, guys, last video, we did a bunch of little things, a bunch of big things. We got the fuselage portions painted, gear back installed, lots of stuff completed. Now what we're gonna start to do is we're gonna start to move into the rear section of the aircraft, which is this middle section here, and work our way forward. Now, I believe I mentioned this in the last video, but uh, we picked up some eighth inch thick, one by one, uh, corner aluminum pieces. The uh, the elevator horns are not available from Skymaster. They have to make them. So we're just going to make our own. Um, this material is probably thicker, if not the same thickness as the stock elevator horns, but uh, it should be fairly straightforward. Obviously, we just want to make the match. You basically have two 90s that go together with a, a matching hole in the center. So it should be fairly straightforward. Just got to get our cutting skills out and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be the first portion of this video, and uh, then we'll just see where we move into. Uh, like I said, we're gonna continue on with the rear part of the aircraft and move our way forward. So it's gonna be a good video. Do me a favor, guys. A lot of my viewers are not subscribers on the channel, so if you're watching my videos and you're not a subscriber, it doesn't cost you anything, nothing like that. Just hit that subscribe button down below. When you do hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified when I release new videos, and uh, let's dive back in. Okay, so for the elevator horns, we've got this diagram right here. You can see we wrote missing on there. That's because we sent this off to Skymaster. And uh, so fairly straightforward. It's a little bit wider than the, uh, the bolts that go through the uh, full moving stab, which is good. And uh, have a nice, uh, nice shape like that. So we have something pretty easy to copy there. So what we'll do is we're going to cut two pieces first off that are roughly that length. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, guys, we got these uh, pieces all done. Pretty good match to the originals. Uh, the, way, the bases are uh, quite a bit wider, so I think that's a positive thing. But I, I kept the same shape, rounded the bottom corners, and uh, I think that is going to work out awesome. I'm not too sure on the thickness of the original stuff, but these should work perfect. So really what the key here is, is they don't, essentially they don't need to match 100% but the hole going through obviously we're going to we're going to drill that but that needs to match 100% because you've got two two ball joints uh, mounting on both sides so now the next challenge is to get these holes lined up on the underside so um, i think what i'm going to do is clamp these guys together we're going to clamp this onto the stab and then probably drill through the bottom, I think. Um, I'm gonna give this some thought and uh, we'll figure that out. All right guys, it is plaque giveaway time when we did the unboxing for the bull. We announced the giveaway for this plaque. Now the key, if you didn't know, you missed it, but the key was uh, you had to watch the video, of course, to know that this existed and uh, you had to be a subscriber, give the video a thumbs up, and then comment with the word bull in that video. So let's go to the computer and we will pick our winner of this beautiful handmade plaque. All right guys, so I've opened up the, uh, the picker here for the, the winner. Uh, choose from all comments and comments must contain, oh, we gotta do this, the word bull. All right, let's pick a winner. John Nelson. Awesome, congratulations, John. What you need to do is you need to contact me 
via email. So send me an email, John, and uh, the lighter side of RC at gmail.com, and we will organize getting this to you. Uh, congratulations, and we'll do more giveaways like this in the near future. It's a busy building season this winter. Thanks for supporting the channel, guys. And again, John, congratulations. All right, so we are all done our elevator horn. Now, a couple of the key points here, well, actually, the really the one key point is you wanna make sure you're using a drill press if you have it uh, when you're drilling this hole right here. So I put it in a drill press jig, use my drill press. That way that hole is, is perfectly straight through. Uh, if you're trying to use a hand drill, uh, there's a good chance that you're gonna be off a little bit in your angle, and that means your ball joints are gonna be in a different spot. But if you're using a drill press, then you're gonna be a nice straight line as you go through there. So that is one of the keys to making this type of stuff work. So we've got this all set up now. Um, it gets bolted on to the, uh, the elevator just like that, the servo sit back here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this bolted onto the elevator and then we're gonna get the actual horizontal stab or elevator bolted on to the mounts on the fuselage. All right, and there we go. We've got the elevator horns bolted on. We've got the, uh, the ball joints bolted on. Now these metal ball joints are pretty serious uh, looking units. Now the way they get put together is, uh, at least the way that I did it, is I put two little washers on the inside and uh, that's just to give this a bit more movement if we need it. I don't think we will, but uh, we've put a lock nut, lock nut on the end, also making sure that we use Loctite on the lock nuts as well. I know some guys say that the Loctite wrecks the plastic, but I'd rather use Loctite than the nylon lock nuts. And then on the bottom side there, we've used washers with our nuts as well. And it uh, looks like it's good. It looks like they've used hardwood or something inside here because when you squish those, uh, the bottom ones down, uh, they're, they're snug. They're not like sinking into, into balsa or anything like that. So uh, very confidence inspiring, that's for sure. So uh, the actual control rods here basically are made up with uh, an aluminum tube that's threaded. Now these are all the same size. These get threaded into the ends. There's an Allen key on one side and not on the other side. So what we do is we Loctite these into place and then we thread our uh, ball joints on as well too. Now when you're doing something like this, great uh, time to be using red Loctite to thread these guys in. And then we can use blue Loctite when we thread the ball joints in. And uh, then the red's holding better than the blue. Um, that just makes sure that if we have to take these guys off in the future, these will come loose before the threaded piece inside the rod will come loose. So we're gonna get these guys made up and basically just squishing these down all the way. And then at least we know they're, they're identical sizes when we make them up. And uh, that'll be the next step we're gonna do here. And then we will get this bolted on to the tail section. All right, guys, and this is one of those moments that I really, I, I don't like to complain, but uh, in the case of Skymaster, you guys put your manual together and it's terrible. Uh, it really is, like there's these pieces, which they call the sliding discs over the elevator brace. And you've got the this one pitcher to go off of everything with, and you can kind of make it out, but you really can't, so. It'd be really nice to actually have some better pitchers. Now I have figured this out. There's the kind of the shorter end on one side, the bigger end on the other side, and we basically have to put the bigger end on the bottom side to cover the opening. So through trial and error and just past experience, we can figure this out, but it's not easy. If that's one thing that I could express to any manufacturer that watches my videos, put a good manual together. Uh, at least some pictures or something just to make complicated stuff like this easier. All right, so we've kind of just got this mocked up just to make sure that it actually fits and works and all that kind of stuff. And I think we are good. Now, I'm not super happy with the length of these bolts. I think these are the bolts that we're supposed to be using. They're the right size, but I don't think they're the right length. So when I, when I look down there, I don't think we have uh, enough coming through the bottom. 
And I'd like to see at least that bolt coming through the bottom. So we'll take a look at those and see what we're going to do. Um, but this is kind of the, just the mock-up. I basically installed the elevator here just to figure out how these things sit on there. So now what happens is there's these guys here and they kind of go on like this. And then you just screw this piece into the elevator and that holds the disc in place. All right guys, so our stock bolts here that are included in the kit, they only come out through the bottom of the elevator by about three threads, so this much, which is not acceptable because we also need to put a washer on these guys as well um, on the top side there. So I fortunately have some uh, longer bolts here and uh, this will actually go all the way through our mounting points. Uh, even with a washer on. So this is what we're going to be using, not those guys. So if you're watching this, putting this kit together, just check your bolt length. It's important. All right, so we've got all of the uh, little cover pieces screwed in. And uh, instead of using just one screw, like it kind of uh, looks like it's supposed to, I ended up using two screws on each side. So front and back just makes for a more solid mount. So now we're ready to install this piece on the fuselage. And what we're going to do is we are going to use our extended bolts with washers and we'll get these uh, fastened in place. And of course we're using Loctite on those guys. All right, so just plugging in the servos here, the elevator servos and getting them set up. Now we're using the HBL 3850s, eight millimeter output shaft. We're using the hubs with the heavy duty carbon horns. So first thing I did was plug these guys in, reverse them because when you pull up elevator, they need to go forward. So that's done. The other thing I really love about these splines is you can rotate them and get them perfect uh, without any sub trim. So uh, the carbon horns, they are drilled top and bottom. So you just basically get your spline lined up so you've got a hole top and bottom. And then now you can screw these in and they're, and they're good. So we will be using the balancer in the Jetty radio. Now, one thing I always do when I set the aircraft up is my left, I always work left to right. So if on the A-10 as an example, we had four flaps. So starting from the left is flap one, two, three, four. Same thing with the elevator surfaces, ailerons, all those things. So left is always one for me, right is always two. So this is elevator one. The right one is elevator two. Now the elevator one will be our primary when we balance them out. The elevator two will be the one that we match the elevator one to. So now that we've got these moving the right direction, centered and everything, next thing to do is get the horns installed and uh, then we'll work on getting these mounted so we can get them adjusted. All right guys, so getting ready to balance these elevator servos. So. What I did is this is a right angle here, uh, but it's important to note that I'm not using the brackets to line these up. That's, this is just for a reference for me. So what I've done is I've taken the case of the servo and visually lined it up with the other servo. A little hard to show you on camera, but if you shine a flashlight through here, you can make sure that we're just on the line. So anyways, the servo cases are lined up now. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be hooking these up to the central box and we're going to get the center points even and both limits even. And we're going to be adjusting the right servo, uh, servo number two, to match those guys. And then what we can do is we can use the servo balancer and balance things out. But one thing that's important is these aren't mounted in the plane yet, so we do have to recheck this stuff in the plane. Now, one thing that's cool with Jetty is if you're using like central box like this and you have one battery installed, so I just unplugged the other battery, you'll see the power draw. So I've actually gone and changed this. So this is the clock. So what I've done is gone and changed that to be an amp meter. If you plug both batteries in, it won't show it. So you want to just have one battery in and I'll show you how I got there. Thank you, David, for showing me this. So we go into, so you go into timers and sensors. 
main screen, and then the bottom here, telemetry displayed at clock panel, so up here. So you can pick whatever you want displayed up at that clock panel, and we've taken uh, the amperage from the CB310 right there. So now, when we plug those servos in, and they're attached at on the actual plane, when we move this around and move the servos, we'll be able to see the amperage draw right there. All right guys, so we're gonna uh, work on these servos right now. So actually they're not, uh, they're not centered. So I'm actually gonna adjust the left one, give it a little bit of sub trim just to move it. Okay, so now we're balanced in the middle and uh, the bolt's a nice indicator because it'll, uh, it'll show you when it's angling sideways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into servo number eight and right now on the screen, it's showing right there, 0.2 amps. So if we actually move these, we're up to 0.63 while it's moving, and then at the end point, it's 0.2. And at the end point, 0.2. Now, the one thing with these, this bolt is there's enough flexibility in this bolt right now that it will move side to side, so there won't be any resistance in the system. But once we get these installed in the aircraft, that's when it's gonna show up to be a problem. But we can visually see the endpoints, which is all we wanna do right now at this point. So I'm gonna go into servo number eight, and we're gonna adjust the endpoints here. So that's minus 100, and servo number eight, or the right one here, I can see already that it's moving too far. And it's helpful if I look from this angle. So I can adjust the max positive. Actually, that's gonna be max negative. Here we go, so we go from 100 to 97, and now we're even there. And then we go the other direction, and we have to probably add three points because it's not traveling quite enough. There we go. So it's got the same amount of travel, 100 and 100, but we've shifted this servo uh, three points in one direction. Now I can see as I move this that there is differences in these servos. So as I, as I pull these servos back, visually when I watch that, that uh, bolt that's going through there, it actually shifts like this and then back to level. So it's level, shifts like this, and then back to level at the end point. So that middle, it's got uh, a couple degrees of angle there. So that's what we're gonna be adjusting out in the servo adjustment or servo balancer in the jetty system. So with that done, our endpoint's done, now we can work on getting these guys installed in the aircraft. All right guys, so just working on these elevator servos, getting them mounted down next. Uh, what I've done is I've got the elevator neutral marked on a piece of tape. Uh, where I came up with that was a couple things. Uh, number one, saw a build thread, and I think it uh, comes in on that rivet line right there. And the other thing too is if you take a straight edge, run it across this rivet line, it ends up paralleling the bottom of the, the cover plate thing there. So we've got two checks and balances. So we've got just a ruler holding it underneath to, uh, to have our neutral position, which is good. And uh, what we need to do now is these carbon plates came with the kit. Uh, the instructions, of course, we know they suck. So uh, I'm assuming these plates go underneath the servos because that would just make sense and it pro would provide extra support. Now there is wood underneath here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, you can see there's not a whole lot of wiggle room, but we're going to screw that plate down into the surface below. 
And then we'll also screw our servo down through that surface as well too. Now it's basically, it's all solid wood underneath there except in the center, uh, which we, we're not screwing into that center area anyway, so that's fine. So we do need to plug the servos in in order to have them centered and everything right now. So I'm gonna get the, uh, the central box sitting here so we can plug those servos in and then we will uh, get those plates positioned properly and uh, get them marked out so we can, uh, we can fasten them down. Now when we're setting this up, we do want to try and get everything as parallel as possible. So you don't want to have the, you know, the servo sitting like this, so it's traveling on an angle. We want everything to be as straight and parallel to um, the arms as possible. So our servos are going to end up fairly close together like this, which is totally fine. But uh, we, uh, that's what we're shooting for. So I may take a straight edge, put it across this uh, servo arm as well too, run those forward, see what it looks like. But we do need to get things kind of stuck in place first. All right, so we are all hooked up. Now initially I had the servo output shafts here and uh, I, I didn't have the horns cut down yet. So what I did was I took a Dremel and I cut off the horns. Now. That was all fine and dandy, but when I put the carbon underneath, that raised it up just enough to touch the, uh, the cover that goes over the back here. So what I did is I dropped the servo horns down, or the output shafts down on the servo horns to one of the other holes, but we're not getting enough travel. So it says at full travel, you should get 75 millimeters. I think that's way too much, but we want to make sure we have access to that travel and right now we don't because the, the nut is hitting the actual servo and we're at 65-ish millimeters of travel. So we're going to uh, pull these servo horns off now. We're going to keep the out output spline where it is. So we're just going to undo the center bolt and uh, then we're going to drill a matching hole uh, on each servo horn and that matching hole is gonna be in between these two. Uh, we do need to sand this horn down a little bit as well too while we have it off. So that's kind of what's happening with uh, the servo horns. Once we get that modification done, we'll be good. So you can see here we've high sawed the plates down, fastened them down with screws, fastened down the servos, which also holds the plates down as well too. Nice and solid. The reason I glued these plates down is because uh, this isn't super level here. So when you put those plates down there, it had a little bit of wobble to them and I didn't want that. I wanted a nice, soft, solid bed for those plates to embed themselves into to be perfectly level and flat. So that's what we've accomplished there. So we're gonna pull these horns off, make those modifications. Okay guys, so let's balance these elevator servos out. Now these are on right now. They're at our neutral position. You can hear them and uh, they are happy servos right now in the mid position. Harry Kierzon has a great video on YouTube, how to balance your servos. Now that is using a digital servo gauge, the Zykoi one or the travel gauge. Uh, this is going to be a different setup because we are using our amps to balance these things out. So what we're really looking at most importantly is this amp right in the top right hand corner. So right now we're at 0.16 which is just like the electronics and the servos on. Okay, you can see as we move that it increases. But when we're stopped at a certain point, I want that servo amperage or the amperage of the system to be as low as possible. So with the balancer, you got a couple things here. Our auto is turned off. So the auto, when that's off, as Harry talks about, it only does this one point. And this function here is the lock. Now what that lock is, is if we go this direction, okay, we're gonna lock our, if we go this direction, we're gonna lock our surface at that point. So now our elevators are moving. Okay, up travel, you can hear it's very noisy. We've got 0.85 amps. So what we can do is we can drop this down. You gotta push the button to get there. Oh, we're disappearing. There we go. So we're up 0.16 amps. 
So what it's done, remember we're always adjusting the right servo when we're doing balance. So this servo uh, is the, the master servo, let's call it, and this servo is the slave. So now this servo at this point in the travel, which is like 25% travel, is perfectly matched. Okay, so we'll go to our next point here, which is right there. Lock that one. There we go. So we have to go a little bit on the opposite side. So now we're on the positive side of the curve. Okay. And we'll unlock that. Okay, so we need, do need to be careful here because what starts to happen is our little screw that holds this stuff on actually starts to hit the fuselage and then also the leading edge of our surface here starts to hit the fuselage as well. So we just have got to be careful on this next point. So we're going to go to there, which is going to be our max travel. There we go. So you can see, we've kind of got a little bit of an S curve going on there, but at each one of those points in our travel, we are at a happy 0.16 amps, which is perfect. So we're gonna do the same thing going the opposite direction, which is forward elevator, and uh, hopefully our servos are happy at that point. All right, so you can see the, the funky curve we got going on here, but if you watch the extremes, so when we go full forward elevator, we have 0.16 amps, which is awesome, and full up elevator, 0.16 amps. So the servo is happy in all of its travel. All right, guys, we are all done with the rudder setup um, I'm happy with everything. It worked out really well, nice and clean and organized, and everything is good. Decided to run the servo lines through the top here for a couple of reasons. Number one, the rudder servo sits about here, so all of our lines can come together and go forward. If we were to run them in this area here, uh, it's gonna be a lot closer to the pipe because we've gotta go through this former right here, but up here we can stay much further away from the pipe, so no heat issues going up top. So we're gonna put the cover on and uh, move on to the rudder. All right guys, so we got the rudder kind of initially started. I'll try and show you there, but you can see the, the rudder horn. So it's pretty straightforward. You put the, the output shaft through the receiver and there's two aluminum pieces. The threaded piece goes through. And so that's all done. So this is the output shaft of the rudder. I uh, made sure I lubed this first with some grease, so now it's nice and smooth. And uh, so that portion's finished. Now the stock Skymaster arms that come in the kit, these are too small. They, don't, they, they won't work, they're not long enough. So I've got some other output shafts from other Skymaster builds, and these are the next ones up. Those are the right size, so I switched to those guys. Now we've got the stock ball joints, which are here. This threads into the rudder output shaft that I just showed you with, a, I think, a two millimeter screw. And then this side here, we're putting some Seacraft ball joints, some three millimeter ball joints on this end, and that's gonna go into our servo horn. Now our servo horn, we're using the 3850 servo. This was a really long servo horn, like a four inch servo horn. I measured this distance here to match the distance of the rudder shaft, and we cut off and shaped this portion. So now our Seacraft uh, stuff can bolt onto here. So what we'll do now is we will get this mounted to the receiver portion, and then we'll get this mounted to the Seacraft arms. This is going to take a little bit of uh, finesse to get this all hooked up because it's pretty crappy access. 
All right, rudder is now complete. And it actually wasn't too bad other than just working in that tight space. So uh, the linkage design itself off the rudder output shaft with those ball joints basically allows the right am amount of movement on the rudder, but it won't allow any more. So the manual calls for 42 millimeters. You can max it out to about 45, but uh, right now we've set it up for 42 and it looks perfect. So that's a nice solid linkage system, no play in the system and uh, went together really well. So last thing to do in this step is deal with the wires. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mount the elevator wires uh, using electrical tape and some CA. And then where all these wires come together, we're gonna put uh, some snakeskin on there. We have to do a bit of an extension for the rudder servo. Now in a case like this where the, you've got decent access to this area, either by splitting the fuselage, I am going to not bundle that rudder servo lead up. I'm gonna use that in the length because you've got good access there, so. All right guys, so the last thing for this video is we are going to get our light mounted on the rear end here. Now we did figure out the wiring, so all of our wiring comes to an ash lock connector and uh, this is well behind the hot section or the bell mouth. So what I did here was I installed the pipe into the tail section and found out how much it sticks forward in that tail section. Then I line that up in the actual mid fuselage section. So the bell mouth comes to about here, the edge of the bell mouth. So the actual pipe itself will start back about here. Uh, so this is kind of some rough positioning. So any of the heat that's kind of possibly escaping is gonna happen in this area. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have any of our wires and stuff coming from about this point onward is gonna have a fireproof sheath over top of it. And I made sure our connectors are in the back section of the tail so we don't have any of those connectors exposed. Now, I'm not a fan of hard mounting connectors on a regular basis, so I've seen a, one other video where the guy actually had the plug-in right in this area. Now, the problem with that is you're getting closer to the hot section of the pipe, you're up, which is where the heat rises to, right, or fire or anything like that always goes up, and uh, unless there's air movement. But uh, the other downside is that lip for the back part of the fuselage sits right here and you've got your canopy has a fair bit of structure in this area as well too. So in order to make a plug in here, you have to get rid of some of that support on the, uh, the, the hatch cover. I shouldn't call it a canopy. So that's why I opted for this connection route back here. Now we're gonna have our airline connectors. We'll do those back here as well too. And we'll have one light connector. The, uh, the strobe, the red strobe mounts right in this area and our wire is gonna come right to here. So fairly straightforward uh, to mount that light. Let's take a look at the light itself. So the light itself came in the Unilight kit. This is the, uh, there's the number for it right there. Here's the actual light itself. These are super cool. Uh, um, units for a scale aircraft like this. And this is the lens that we're gonna use on the underside of the light. So basically we just need to make a shape in the underside of the aircraft that matches this white thing. And then we can slide this through. We're gonna shoe goop it in place. And then we shoe goop the lens cover on. Pretty straightforward mounting on this. I'll show you the next steps here. All right, so there's the cutout for the light. So this is gonna go from the inside through here and uh, essentially the only thing that's gonna be protruding past the surface of the aircraft is gonna be the actual LED. So we don't, uh, don't need this to sit down all the way. And uh, so anyways, we're gonna get that uh, stuck in place, probably use some CA just to kind of lock it in place. And then we'll use shoe goop to, uh, to get it in its final position. And then when you put the lenses on, uh, shoe goop works really well for these lenses. Uh, it's a real strong fit, but then also if you ever need to get these things off, you can pry it off as well. So that's how I like to mount those lenses on the aircraft. 
All right, guys, and that is it for this episode. We got the tail done in this episode, which is huge progress. Uh, the elevators definitely took quite a bit of finesse and thinking and manipulation and creation and all that fun stuff makes this thing inside my head work, which is awesome. Uh, tail's done, which means that it is time to work our way forward and put the pipe in the tail and the midsection. So we are going to be in the next video joining this part of the fuselage to that part of the fuselage and working our way forward, which is awesome. So in the next video, we're gonna do that and we're also probably gonna get started on the wings in the video as well too. Now we've got the gear already sorted in those wings, but we've got a lot of things to do on those wings, surfaces, lights, all that kind of stuff. So another great video coming up in the next one. Thanks guys for watching the Hawk build series. It's been really fun to pound through this plane. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I think that I'll probably have this plane done before any of these videos actually are released. So if you're watching this video, uh, it's probably recorded weeks ago, so which is pretty crazy. So anyways, guys, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching. Give the video one of these. If you liked it, hit that subscribe button if you like the channel. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.